Good morning, folks. Let's go right to spaceweathernews.com to find a calm last 24 hours on our star. Looking at the southern hemisphere offers us a glimpse of the sunspots near the equator, but we see no flashes from flares or no filament eruptions either. When we examine the northern hemisphere, we find a similar quiet, but we can focus in on where the action would likely be if there was any. Plasma filaments, sunspots, Let's go to the intensity gram and first analyze the sunspot situation. Website members knew yesterday would bring a surge in solar activity and sunspots like these at the departing limb and those center disk because of a significant heliocentric geometry. There's still no delta class magnetism on the earth facing disk and solar flaring remains very low considering the number and size of the sunspots. Let's also note the umbral field loops behind the plasma filament dancing above the surface. Those belong to a sunspot still behind the limb coming into view. The solar wind remains above average in speed, but the stream is steady and without much variation, so a measure of stability to Earth's systems has returned. Update on the heliospheric disruption. Despite the fact that these CMEs will miss our planet, they are still causing a four-bush decrease of cosmic rays due to the surge throughout so much of the sky. Their 1 AU mark can't be far away now. Advanced watchers, remember we had to use Proba 2 because SDO went a bit ape nuts during the solar eruption. But if you look closely, the Proba 2 got the jitters as well. It was short, smaller, but definitely some shaking after the filament erupted. No way that's coincidence, and no way it's anything other than solar induced. Anyway, folks, that one AU mark for the CMEs of the heliospheric disruption is on our doorstep along with this corona hole and Venus conjoining Saturn in the pre-dawn sky. Over at QuakeWatch.net, the first thing I did this morning around 3.30 a.m. was raise the earthquake index to high as those events draw nearer. Earthquake warning is in effect. Top news today is a great confirmation of metallic hydrogen and one step closer to the realization of Dr. Robitaille's liquid metallic hydrogen sun model. Baby steps for the mainstream, guys. Baby steps. Climate report is out for 2015. December reflects that flip-flop holiday season in the U.S. And for the whole year, you see the El Nino effect, which pushed warmer air over the states all year long. The heliospheric disruption wasn't without atmospheric disruptions as tropical depression force winds spin off the U.S. East Coast and folks, the earliest northern central Pacific cyclone formation on record. Two great earth spots triggered in the electric event. Folks, the top weather story by far is in Europe, however, as the New Zealand storm rolls away and the west coast of the U.S. has a day of rest before the next onslaught. This Icelandic low system has been brutal to you guys this season. If you want to learn more about Dr. Robitaille's hypothesis with metallic hydrogen, please see his conference presentation from Observing the Frontier. It's here on YouTube. It's linked for you below, but that's the title. You could also just search for it. Folks, we're running out of time to book hotels and grab tickets for part two of Observing the Frontier, the finale, so to speak. No better time to be in Phoenix, and no better way for an open mind to spend a weekend. We've got shots of our star to close. It's 5.40 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.